Good morning, fellow Christian. Welcome to Knowwood United Methodist Church. What a beautiful morning. It's warm. It's going to be a hot day today. But we are grateful we are in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Come, let's praise God together. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's tell stories of God's power and majesty. His mighty act throughout history. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's worship God together. Please remain standing 
up in your him to page 57. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Who are you? And Jacob said, My name is Jacob. And the angel said, I will bless you. I will change your name. You're no longer named Jacob. I will call you Israel. And this person, Jacob, became Israel. He has 12 children, and those 12 children made up the uh, 12 tribes of the uh, Israelites. So what I'm trying to say that there are times that we're ready to give up, but when God comes to you, and if you never give up but hold on to God and trust him and know that God loves you, God will bless you. So as you go back to school, always remember there's someone who can help you when sometimes you feel lonely, sometimes you worry, sometimes you're having a hard time at school. Remember, don't give up because why? God is near you. God is always there for you to help you. Like this name, this guy, this person named Jacob, when he know that God is wrestling with him, he didn't want to let him go until God, the angel of God, blessed him. And he was blessed, and he is known in the Bible as uh, Israel, and his sons become the well-known um, tribes of Israel. So never give up. If you don't remember the whole story, but always remember, never give up, because why? God loves you, and God is always there to help you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's stand and hold hand, and we'll pray. And we'll pray for you as you return to school uh, this week. Be safe, and know that we are praying for all of you. Let us pray. Oh, loving God, we thank you for these children who gather here today. We pray that you protect them as they're ready to prepare to go back to school next week and the week to come. We ask, oh God, that you walk with them, watch over each and every one of them as they return to school. Bless their teachers and bless their friends. Keep them safe and give them wisdom and understanding. Be humble, be obedient, and be able to learn as much as they could, oh Lord. Bless their parents and they will be supporting and traveling uh, and taking them to school and they always there for them, oh God. Let them not fear nothing, but only fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now you may return to your seat. Take this time to share our blessing and also um, share any prayer concerns that we may have. And together we have our pastor prayer. Good day, men. Did I go for the high of the bar? And I tap work. If I'm on the line, but I go for the high. I go to the low. I go fear. I go to the Any blessing this uh, new month? New beginning, Chris. We celebrated our anniversary on Friday. How many years? 61. Ooh. Wow, happy anniversary. 61. 61, 61 years. years. Wow. 61 years old. Congratulations. Yeah. And many more years to come. Now, and Chris, 61 years. Any, any other? I have concern. I have concern with Linda. Uh, she, she thought she had COVID. She was tested, and she doesn't have it. But she has other problems, and that's why she's not here today. Okay. Okay. Okay, Ralph. Send her our love and keep Linda in your prayers. I know she was concerned with the testing. It's not COVID, but uh, uh, we'll keep her in our prayers. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, Annette? Yes, I thank God for uh, time with my family in Chicago. And uh, I had a safe trip last night, and I'm back home. Last Praise night, and here you are. 
Wow, you just got back last year. Yes, here you are. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to have you back safe and sound. Thanks. Yep. Oh, yep. Julieta? Yes, uh, I want to uh, praise God that I'm here with you. There's no place like home at Norwood. Uh, and um, I made it a one piece. Um, <laughs> I drove in Hawaii and I was very scared, but um, because I wanted to go visit Susanna Wesley, uh, which is one of our United Women in Faith uh, missions that we support as a conference. So I was able to, to visit Susanna Wesley Center and, and give $100 on behalf of uh, Norwood. Thank uh, you. And um, I also uh, uh, wanted uh, to lift up my daughter, Juliet Salazar, or Juliet Rodriguez. Uh, it's her birthday uh, next uh, Friday. Uh, or this Friday, this Friday, August the 12th. And she's been so busy. And she's been so busy. And I also want you to lift her up in prayer. She's the new uh, vice principal at uh, Granada Hills Charter. Uh, so she has a lot uh, on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. And she's opening up today, uh, uh, this week, with the teachers. Mm -hmm. And she's in charge of that. Uh, and um, I also want to lift up Pete's sister, uh, Aurora, and uh, my niece uh, that is terminal. Uh, she uh, has some lung disorder that I don't know, but uh, she's, she's fine. And her mom, uh, who is Pete's older sister, she's 80. How old is Aurora? She's uh, two years older than I uh, 85. She's 85. Uh, so uh, it's very hard that both my and my other niece is facing losing her mother and her sister. And she left prayers to her and to everyone um, here before us. Thank you, Julieta. Thank you for sharing and returning home safely with Wills and family of the Bithini Hawaii. And we'll keep Juliet, in our prayers, your sister and your niece. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. Uh, good to see the Tuihalamaka family. Dolo, would you like to introduce your, um, your friend here? I think you just got called out, man. That's a <laughs> yes. Welcome, welcome. Good to welcome. have you here today. <laughs> Another junior, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, your cousin, okay. Okay, okay. Um, welcome and thank you for being with us today. And uh, uh, it's always good to see new faces in church. And uh, wish you all the best. Um, I'm going to have Tina share about yesterday's youth day and all other prayer concerns. As you know, we have our Tongan youth was participated in the youth um, day yesterday in Carlton. So I'm going to pass it to Tina to share with us that that is a blessing and, and other prayer concerns. Thank you, thank you, girl. Thank you, Pastor. Felicita. Uh, an update on my auntie. She's doing much better. She's improving. She's able to move her leg and her arm. Thanks be to God. On behalf of the Director of Youth of Edna Tuhalamaka and myself, we want to thank the church and thank the parents and the Faifikao for yesterday. It was beautiful. The children did really well. Um, they practiced for months um, with the dance, the Tongan dance, and also reciting their uh, scripture verse, John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17, and they sang a song. So I'm very proud of the kids. They did really well, and um, I want to thank the parents for their effort, their hard work, 
bring their kids every weekend. They gather here, and I want to give credit to my sister-in-law, Moa Tahafe Hufanga. She choreographed the, their dance and also creating their costume. It was beautiful. Our kids stand out. They stand out. They um, they recite their verses pretty well. The other churches was impressed. And um, I was told by the MC uh, not to recite it in English, only in Tongan. I'm like, no, our kids practice English and Tongan. Because I teach the kids English because they understand. If they recite something in Tongan and not understand, what's the use of it? We had to deliver the message and the kids to understand. So our kids, they recited in English and in Tongan, and uh, it was beautifully done. And I'm so proud of you kids. The kids are here, Ofa, Carecita, Lupe, we miss you Tolo. But I just want to thank the church. And Metui. And Metui, yes. The boys perform and the girls perform. Can you please give them a big round of applause? They did really well. Thank you, kids. And and utmost uh, respect for our lay leader, the Tongan lay leader, um, Final, for being there and being supportive. And when it's time for our kid to sing, all the parents were behind us. So the kids were kind of nervous, and we turn around, and we see all the parents, yes. their parents, and um, I got feedback from the other churches. Our children did pretty well. So I'm proud of you kids, Malo. Malo. And if you want to see pictures to witness what happened yesterday, go into my Facebook. And we're going to try to upload some in our uh, church <laughs> website. There are lives, um, live streams, and also pictures of what happened yesterday. But thank you for all your prayers and support. Thanks be to God. Continue to keep Halaivalu uh, Atu in your prayers. Uh, Hina's auntie. Also pray for Wineti and Ikubalu um, Tahafe. And for those who are not with us today, especially those who experience illness. Lord, in your love and mercy. Yeah. Any other sharing? Uh, for the Tongan, Malo Apito Setua Talamalene Ahufana Waneafi, Malo Mopo Pohan Nego Famatala Fai Pulela Tohi, Afofa Ahufana, Uyako Moka Mai, Popo, Ika Taki, Piamoe, Tarekita, Pelamalele, Kosapa Tekahau, the Tamalanga Fakatonga Pean, Ietaimi. Next Sunday, we will have a uh, separate uh, church service. We will have service at 10 and at the Tongan at 12. Uh, today, we have a trustee meeting uh, right after service, and we invite you to worship with us, I mean, to share with us in uh, Patio and then Adam Center for our uh, fellowship more time of sharing and today we'll be having communion so let us prepare ourselves with all this prayer concerned uh, likewise keep our children our young people uh, as they return to school next week and the weeks to come some of our um, college students Niwafe um, and Mayoko's son in Nebraska Junior to Ihanomaka and many others who are going away for college Keep them in our prayers. They needed us prayers. And congratulations to Juliet being a vice president. And we're so proud of her too. So other than that, let us take this time to have a moment of silence before our pastor prayer. Let us pray. 
O oh Lord, in the moments of silence, to discern your voice, your presence, your unconditional love to each and every one of us. When we inhale the breath of life, we bring in the love of God. Inhale your mercy for forgiveness of our sins. We inhale your peace, your hope, and let it go through our body, our heart, our mind. And when we exhale, we let go our fear, our worries, our concerns, our troubles, our burdens. Because we believe in you, O oh God, the creator of heaven and earth. And your promise to Jacob when he fell asleep and he had a dream that you promised to him you will fulfill his dreams and bless him. And in return, Jacob said, I will give you 10% of everything that you have offered to me. Likewise, we come before you, confess we are sinners, asking for forgiveness, trusting in you and your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Malaya <laughs> O Lord, we come and we struggle with many questions that seem to have no answers and problems that have no solutions. We seem to be a deeply divided people, but we look and listen to people around the world and so many things are happening, war, divisions, and it's getting worse every day through guns and killing. Surely we humans must test your patience, but we know that your love is all compassion, never ending, always forgiving. And that is our hope as we pray that you love us unconditionally. We come, O oh God, and ask for your blessing on all of those names that we share in our midst. Thank you for those who travel and return home safely, a time that they refresh and renew and be with family. We pray, O oh God, for the teachers, especially one of our own uh, members, Julian, for a new chapter of her life to become a vice president, that the Department of Education at Granada Hills Charter Academy entrusted with her. We pray, O oh God, that you give her wisdom and strength and good health and may her leadership bring blessing to our children in the future of this community. And the rest of our children, oh God, as they prepare to return to school, be with our college students. Junior to Halamaka, all the way in Nebraska, oh Lord, we pray that you watch over him as he grow in your love and grace. And for those college students, oh God, we hold them dearly in our heart. We reach we ask that you reach them and touch them, allow them to experience your presence, even though they are so far away from their family and all of us. We pray for the youngsters that return to high school, middle school, and elementary and preschool. Let them fear the Lord first and be obedient and be humble. 
We pray for our parents, grandparents, that they are prayer warrior to pray for our children, our church, our community, and throughout the world. Hear our prayers, O oh God, and never give up, because we always know of your promise is ever true. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And you'll always hear our prayers of those who come to you with faith and trust. When we never give up, you're going to bless us so we can be a blessing to others. Hear our prayers, O oh God, and there are many unheard prayers that we may not be able to share with you in this moment. But prepare us, O oh God, to hear your word and receive your body and your blood. Symbolize that Jesus died and rose again, and that is our hope for salvation. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Be with us in our worship. We come to fulfill our lives with your words, with strength, with power of your grace, so we may go out and share that with the world. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For time is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. The scripture reading for this morning is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 22 to 31. That night Jacob cut up, got up, and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed the fort of the Jabal. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possession. So Jacob, was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, bless them, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Never give up. That is the title of my sermon for this morning. If we look at the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis chapter 32, it talks about Jacob and what happened when he was wrestling with the angels of the Lord. If we think about Jacob and his life, he has been struggling since birth. In the beginning, when he was born, he was uh, born to Isaac and Rebecca. He is the second child, his older brother Isaac. They were twins. Rebecca and Isaac have been uh, parents for many years, so they've been praying to God, and God uh, blessed them, and they have twins. Isaac is the oldest. Esau, um, Jacob is the youngest. Esau is the oldest, Jacob is the youngest. But when they were praying and asking God for a child, God blessed them with two children. 
And when they were in Rebecca's wombs, they were struggling. So Rebecca inquired with the Lord, what is going on? So the Lord said, you have two sons. The oldest will serve the youngest. And they will always struggle with each other. They won't, they will not get along as surely what happened when Esau was born first. It was told that his younger brother Jacob was holding on to Esau's heel. It's, it's kind of like grabbing him and holding him because he wanted to come first. Anyway, it was told before to Rebecca, your two sons will be struggling as they were growing up. And because they won't get along, or somehow they will divide it, the nation. So now Esau and Jacob growing up. In their Jewish traditions, the elders will always receive the blessing. It was told that Esau is a man of field. He always out for hunter. Jacob was a very quiet person, always dwelling in the tents, always at home with mom, which means father favored Esau the oldest and Rebecca favored the youngest, Jacob. So one day when Esau came back from the field, he was so hungry, Jacob cooked a soup and Esau said, I'm very hungry. Jacob said, swear to me that you're gonna give me your birthright and I'll give you my soup. And Esau <coughs> said, I'm about to die. What the use of having his birthright? So Jacob offered his soup, Esau ate it, and there started this uh, conflict, this burdens, these struggles, these issues between the two brothers. One day, their father Isaac is getting old. He wanted to bless his oldest son and give him the birthright, the, uh, the blessing. Rebecca, the mother, heard about that plan. He told me, the one that she favored, Jacob, go and make food and bring it to your father. And when your father asks, who are you? You respond, I am Esau. Jacob did exactly what his mother said. He prepared the food, brought it to his father. Um, Isaac was blind, cannot see. He said, who are you? And Jacob said, I am Esau. Isaac said, you sound like Jacob, but when you touch him, he's hairy because that is who Esau is. Um, he who uh, Esau um, was hairy. So his father <coughs> Isaac said, okay, after he ate, then he blessed not Esau, but Jacob. So the birthright goes to Jacob. Esau came back and found out that uh, Jacob tricked his father and he went after Jacob to kill his younger brother. Jacob left because his mother said, go to my homeland, stay with my brother, Raven. So Jacob ran away from home knowing that his brother Esau is after him. So Jacob has been struggling being a tricker, cheated his father, lied to his father, received the birthright, tricked his brother, and now he is on the run for his life. Jacob went, he goes and goes, and finally arrived to Rebecca's brother's uh, homeland. Stayed with his uncle, Raven, and guess what happened? What goes around, come around. He met two of his uncle's two daughters, the oldest is Leah, the youngest is Rachel. Uh, Jacob liked Rachel, the youngest, but his uncle said, no, you must marry the oldest. The oldest must marry first. So he worked for seven years, and Raven, his uncle, tricked him by giving his oldest daughter, but he was hoping to marry the youngest. Then his uncle said, if you want to marry my youngest daughter, Rachel, you're going to work for another seven years. So that's 14 years that Jacob works for his uncle and then married the youngest. They have 11 children and 
But on his way to his uncle, let's go back in our story, when he ran away from Esau, he fell asleep. And that was the previous chapters before Genesis. He fell asleep and he saw angels descending and ascending to heaven on a ladder. And God promised to Jacob, I will bless you. That's part of the blessing of the family that was given to him. I will bless you and I will never leave you or forsake you. Then Jacob woke up and he knew that God is with him. Even though he ran away, he's on the run from his brother. So while he works for 14 years, married the oldest after seven years, worked for another seven years, married the youngest, and now have 11 children, uh, 12 children and one daughter, and God has been blessing Jacob and his two wives and his children. And it's about another six more years that the Lord said to Jacob, it's time for you to return home and make peace with your brother. So Jacob said, I will be obedient to you, Lord, because I promise I will always obey you and I will always give you the 10% of what you have blessed me. And I think that's where the 10% of offering that we always give to the church. It comes from this promise by Jacob to the Lord. So 20 years later of being away from his home, running away from Esau, then now he decided to go back and make peace with his brother. And that is where our Genesis chapter 32 is about. So Jacob took his two wives, his children, and he has so many possessions. He was wealthy, he was a wealthy man. So as they traveled back, he sent a few of his servants just to go meet Esau and see where he's at. Is he still mad at him or is he going to welcome him? So when his servants return, they say to Jacob, Esau is coming. Your brother is coming looking for you. And he has 400 men with him. Then Jacob said, okay, wait a minute. Let's not go and meet him. He was scared because it means that his brother is still mad at him, very angry at him. So Jacob did this other trick. He divided his family, and one goes to the other side of the country, and one of the group goes to the other side, probably goes to south and the north, and then he was alone. And that's where we picked up our reading tonight. He decided that if I divide up my family, some will go to this side of the, of the country and the other will go to the other side. And if Esau and his man come, and if they destroy one group, at least the other group still survive. And then he went out and he was alone. And here that night, Jacob got up and took his wives and when he divided his people, he was left alone. Once again, he was alone when he ran away from his brother. He got married, had family, returned to his brother, divided them into groups to see what Esau, what Esau will do, and now he left alone. And all of a sudden, he felt that there's somebody touching him. A man was wrestling with him all night long. Like I asked the children, do you like wrestling? And they have no idea what it's at. But I know we always watch wrestling um, <coughs> on, on TV. It's it's a it's it's a fake game. I was told a sport. It's not really what we see on the screen. But being wrestling all night till late break, they must have been get tired, exhausted. And when the man finally noticed that whoever this person, the other translation says it was the angels of the Lord. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, which is the angel, he touches Jacob's hip. And he's dislocated his hip. And at that moment, the man said, 
let me go, for it is daybreak, it, it is daylight. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Remember when his father Isaac asked him when he prepared that meal and brought it to him, who are you? Did he respond, my name is Jacob? No, he did not. He said, my name is Esau. This time, when the angel of the Lord asked, who are you? What is your name? What did he answer? Jacob. I wanted to take you back to when he was alone. A man wrestled with him. There are times that when we go through life and we struggle with whatever that's going on around us or in our lives, it's always good to take some time to be alone. And that's where you know that God is with you. He was wrestling with this man until daybreak. And he touched Jacob's hips and he was dislocated. And during that moment, that was the transformation that Jacob had to come true to himself when the man asked what he did. Then he responds, Jacob, your name, the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Never give up. When you wrestle with whatever that's going on in your life, always remember to take some time and sit, be honest with yourself. Recognize that we are sinners and many shortcomings and whatever that's happening in our lives, remember that God knows before you speak. God knows your heart. We're glad that Jacob let his family go so he can be alone in the moment of transformation. A moment that he humbled himself and finally realized he has been running all his life, running from his brother. And now he is struggling with that, not knowing if his brother will welcome him. But when he took the time to be alone and pray and hear God's voice calling him, and he honest with himself and honest with response, I am Jacob. And that's when God come to him and said, you no longer Jacob, but Israel. You have struggled with God and struggled with humans. This morning, I just wanted to remind us that whatever is going on here today, we are small, a small church. But when we wrestle and struggle with that of where is God in the midst of all this, or when you have a health issue, or relationship concerns, or financial situations, or whatever that is happening in your life, remember, don't give up, but come to the Lord and let God touch you. Even though if God will touch you in a way that dislocates your hips or have some brokenness in your heart and your life, there will be hardship. There will be things that may not happen as you want it to be. There will be a different response or how God touched you in your life. It's for you to be transformed, for you to be changed, and for you to renew your life, knowing that God loves you. And then God bless him and many more blessings. And out of Jacob, his 12 children, 10 with Leah, 2 with Rachel, and out of that 12 sons became the whole nation, the 12 tribes of Israel, and continued that tradition because he had been blessed by God and God touched him because he never gave up but hold on to his promise then I will serve you, I will give you my life, and I will always put trust in you. Never give up, church, that there are things happening in our lives. Always remember, there is a reason, and there is a purpose. There is God's plans for you for whatever happening now and today. 
but remember today as we come and receive the bread and the wine and the grape juice. Remember, God gave his life, sacrificed himself to come to this world, to be closer to you and I so we can see how much God loves us. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jacob was no longer Jacob, the name that cheated his father and his brother, but his chain, name changed to renew his covenant with God, and he became the tribes, the 12 tribes of the Israel, Israelite. Today, let us prepare our heart to receive Jesus, even though we struggle with many ways. There is always a chance to come to the Lord. Have a moment of silence throughout this month. Take some time to meditate on his word. Fast if you could. Read his word. Pray to him so God can touch you, renew, refresh, and transform. And if it for you to change your name, dislocated, brokenness, and suffer. It's for the good, because Jesus suffered for all of us. But let's not do that on me, but that I know I'll say for me. Leo mona ane kola, me no toto ko wako isoa. O higo ne lo hi aki i ane tapai o me mahu e tapua, na e tonu ke mahu e isoa. Hili me ai a tapu e ua noa e ne mamahe o halu e ne fa e tanga tapu ne fan, e ne mahi ai, me a mono o me fine o mahu e a fana o e toko o mu mahu. ฟอกิคิโอโฟนุโอตะกุอาระโอฟาเลเดย์ดาโมตะกุวาโอดิโซแต่โกเดฟอกิโกเอนินาเนมานาบาเดเปโตเบียโกเมอิโลอายาโอ
in trust in him, in trust, trust his death and resurrection. Amen. If I invite you to um, join with me in the Lord's uh, table, and we'll be following the musical setting A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church deliver us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit <laughs> And so in remembrance of this almighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By the Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory as we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
sing first song in him, and then Misty will play the rest. Okay. Five, six, three. I will have
and celebrates the Lord's table to remind us that we are forgiven and we must receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And that is the mystery of faith. Living in you, living in your son Jesus Christ with the help of the Holy Spirit. Bless all of us who receive the bread. Encourage and empower us to go out and be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I invite you to take this time to present our gift and offering in response to God's word. God, we're going to sing and tell you him. We are the Lord of the Lord. Thank you, O Lord, and we ask that you bless the little people and bless this gift. Let it be a way that we continue to share the gospel in this community and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn. <clears throat> Page 402, Lord, I want to be a Christian.
service with, that you wanted to be a Christian. To be a Christian, you have love in your heart. And when you have love in your heart, you are more like Jesus. Go and be like Jesus. Bless others because you have been blessed by receiving his body and his blood. Let us go with God's peace, hope, faith, and love. May I go get a story because he's a Christ, my old fire door. Fill up my man on it. Get to do we have a moisty as he or when I hear me, can fight your time at that. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.